Hey guys, James here with Zenith Firearms. We're out here on the range to bring you today's Training Tuesday tip where we're gonna cover sling options for our roller delayed blowback line of weapons. Now we understand lots of you have questions about which sling might be best for you. Still others may have zero experience with slings at all. Each one comes with their own pros and cons, but understanding your requirement and the capabilities and limitations of each will allow you to make the best decision. First, let's go over our standard sling designs. Whether you purchase a Z5 RS or a Z5 P or K, one of these two designs will be shipped with your weapon. Shipped with our Z5 RS comes our three-point tactical sling with a rear clip, a snap hook for the front, and a slider. Our Z5 RS sling is based off the original HK tactical sling design, utilizing the rear sling clip point, either here on an A2 stock or on the sling point of an A3 stock, and then a snap hook that mounts onto your sling attachment point here on the sight tower, and a slider. With the sling attached to the body, you can see I've got free range of motion with the weapon, but if I need to go into, into a position that allows the use of two hands, the weapon has still got a lot of free movement and can become a safety hazard at, at that point. And that's one of the great advantages of having the slider and then the slider attachment point here on the side of the magazine well for the Z5 RS. You simply clip the slider in place by pulling it forward and now the weapon is much more positively secured and you're allowed to do anything that requires two hand movement. To bring the weapon back into action, you simply with the palm of your hand swipe back on the slider, pop it off, and now I've got free range of movement of the weapon again. As our Z5K and P were originally designed to be used in pistol format, in other words, not shouldered, there was no incorporation of a slider attachment on the magazine well. As such, those weapons come with a simple two-point sling with snap hooks on either end. Shown here on this Z5K, I've got both ends of the snap hooks attached to the same sling attachment point. This allows me to utilize what we call the SAS sling technique or a push-pull method. These are great slings straight out of the box and as shown, they come for free with the purchase of weapon. The real downside of these slings is that there's no rapid adjustability at the end user level. In fact, when we used to use these operationally, the technique was actually have the shooter mount the weapon with the sling over the gear that he was gonna wear at that time, and then a teammate would come in and actually adjust the length of the sling and then secure it with 100 mile an hour tape. Another great two-point sling option is this Vickers sling from Blue Force Gear. I was introduced to these slings during my Marine Corps service, and this one's been upgraded over the original design by having additional padding here uh, added to the sling, a welcome advantage uh, to the neck area. These slings come standard with open-ended loops, which allow you to mount them directly to the weapon uh, or through use of any number of accessories like the ones we've shown here from Blue Force Gear, snap hooks, and universal wire loops uh, allow you to customize the fit to your weapon specifically. Shown here mounted to our Z5 RS through use of a U-loop on the rear and a snap hook on the front, it looks and acts very similar to our original tactical sling that ships with your Z5 RS. The main difference here with the Vickers sling is the fact that you have rapid adjustability through use of the pull tab. What a way I like to set up the weapon is to set up its tightest position to allow me to use a push-pull technique and stabilize the weapon. But in those instances where I need more range of motion, simply by using my support hand and pulling back on the, on the pull tab, I now can gain access to my weapon to do a reload, a malfunction clearance, or a transition to a secondary weapon, and then bring the weapon back into action again. All I have to do is pull that tab back into position. The downside with this sling or any two-point configuration is that when transitioning from right gun to left gun, you can end up having to fight around the sling and the neck. Lastly today, we'll cover the Haley Strategic D3 sling and the D3 slick sling. What I really like about these slings is how low profile they are. They're very lightweight, they're not bulky at all, and they're modular in design. And what I mean by that is they transition very easily from a single point sling to a two point sling and back again, and also have the rapid adjustability through a pull tab like we saw on the Vicker sling. The D3 sling uses a fixed QD attachment 
which can mount to any QD accessible accessory uh, that you may have on your weapon, like shown here, our KES stock from Safety Harbor. In this configuration, I've got it set up for a single point sling, which allows me a free range of movement to transition from left gun to right gun and back again, or anything that I want maximum movement capability of the sling and weapon. In those situations where you need to go hands-on and require more stability from your sling, you can simply detach the main quick detachment point and maneuver it up to a mounting position on the front of your weapon. Now you've got a two-point configuration. Going back to a single point is as simply as detaching it from its front mounting position and remounting it to the sling. Rapid adjustability for length of pull is accessible through your pull tab. Forward for more room and back for tighter. One of the other great advantages that I really like about the D3 sling and its modularity is the fact that I can maintain the sling on my body when I'm working in and around tight confined spaces like this vehicle here. As you can see, most people don't ride around with a weapon slung to their body. They've got it in a rack or maybe it's in a bag. And this allows me to be able to access myself around a seat belt, retrieve the weapon and bring it into action and then when the opportunity presents itself, very simply and quickly, attach my sling into position and then maneuver out. The contrast and what we see most often is where people will take their two-point sling and they'll S-fold the back of the slack around the stock. And then when they bring the weapon into action, they simply snap it out of position. But now I've got a lot of, of snag hazard in the way that I've got to fight to either get around my head while I'm in this confined space, or I've got to fight out of the vehicle and hope that I don't get caught uh, with something on the vehicle or maybe even step through with my leg as I'm getting out. Similar to the original D3 sling is the D3 slick sling. Still very low profile in design. Instead of having fixed QD attachment points, it's got open-ended loops, which allow you to mount it directly to a weapon or use any of the sling attachment accessories that we've shown you previously. It still incorporates the pull tab for adjustable length of pull, um, but it loses that ability to be a single point to two point configuration. In this setup, it's just a two point sling. As you can see, when choosing a sling, you've got many options to choose from and lots of factors to consider. I've just shown you a few today that I've got a lot of experience with. Finding the one that works best for you should be your goal. And in order to do that, you gotta grab your Zenith firearm and a buddy and get out to the range and train. One. Try them with and without gear on. One. During reloads and malfunction clearances. Maneuvering around obstacles and barriers. From unusual positions in confined spaces. And during day and night. And if you've got questions, give us a call. At Zenith, we believe in our products and the solutions they provide. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and I look forward to seeing you next time.